Hey guys, what's up? It's me. Um, wanted to talk about a couple things. Um, a, I got a haircut. <laughs> B, um, all you guys that, that have messaged me or commented, um, how glad you are that I came back and how glad you are to see me back. Oh, thank you. It, it makes me feel so warm and fuzzy inside to, to see that. I'm glad that you guys missed me. And I missed you guys, clearly, because I'm back. And, um, it's just nice that, you know, you guys miss me. It makes me feel special. <laughs> um, so, what I want to talk about. Uh, what's been going on on the family front, you know? I'm going to make another video going through everything that happened. But this is, the, um, for those of you who knew what happened, this is uh, the, kind of the repercussions of what happened. And it's not good, to say the least. Let's sit up here. Um, it's been a year and a couple months since the incident with my father, and since then I've processed everything, and quite well, um, and in processing it, you know, and getting over my depression and anxiety and actually being happy, I started realizing that what I did as far as taking that truck and driving into oncoming traffic, um, or, you know, taking that truck and, uh, and all that was probably the most selfish thing I've ever done in my life. I, it keeps replaying in my head, um, yes, I know at the time I was in a state of panic and, um, all these things, but the guilt of knowing that I almost cost somebody else their life is 100% real. That kind of guilt is, uh, it's pretty bad, you know, um, I, I keep, I don't know how many times I've started letters to apologize to the guy, but what do you say? I mean, sorry, I almost took your life. Sorry is just not a word that you use in this kind of situation. It, it's just, it, it, it almost like it belittles, you know, you say you're sorry when you bump into somebody walking on the street or when you piss a friend off. You don't say it when you, you know, do something like that. And, you know, I don't know what to say. It's, it's really, um, it's, it's hard for me to process that and to, find an understanding within myself about, you know, everything, it's, it's really hard. Um, so what's going on with that? My father talks to me now, and um, it's not in a bad way, it's not in a negative way. We have a, a we're building um, a new relationship, and um, it's really good. I can't say that he agrees with anything. His opinions on things haven't changed as far as that, but... He, he told my mother, who he divorced, he spent 26 years with her, that he could go plenty of days without ever thinking about her, but that he thought about me every day. So he started talking to me again. I, and I, I know he loves me. And I have no doubt of that. You know, what happened was very tragic and unfortunate. But, you know, we're moving on from that. However, the guy that um, I, uh, caused to get into an accident... Um, from what my father said, he's, he's injured, and he's probably going to sue my dad. Insurance didn't cover what happened, and so, to pay for all his medical bills, they're going to go after my dad with a lawsuit, and more guilt. I mean, what, what do I say? I'm... And it's also costing him a shit ton of money because of the guy's truck that I took. His insurance isn't covering it, and he owes them like $1,200 for that. And my dad has to pay that. I mean, all this falls back on him. My actions are all falling back on him. And it's like, shit. I mean, yes, we got into a fight. I was bitter for a little while. But in the end, he doesn't deserve to pay for things at this point. Um... Or at that point, it, it shouldn't have 
things shouldn't have happened the way they did. They really shouldn't. And I've never been one to sit here with what it could have should have. But it kills me. It, it literally kills me that I didn't handle that situation better. Um, you know, yes, there was an upside to it. I've learned a lesson that I, I clearly will never forget. And it's, it's a hard lesson. It's a hard one to swallow. And it, the repercussions of it will affect so many people for a very long time. But it's, it's just, it's really hard to imagine the things that are unfolding and the mess that was caused that I don't think will ever be completely cleaned up. Um, and it was, it was pretty bad. And, uh, you know, so that, that's what's going on. My mom, I have a, a, a great relationship with her. Um, and my, my uncle and the rest of my family, they're cool, you know, they don't really talk to me, which we never really talked anyways. I haven't seen them in over a year, so I don't know, like, how they would treat me when they see me. It wouldn't be bad, I mean, they're, they're really good people. My family, my, I come from a family of really good people. Um, you know, and I know at first I was bitter uh, because of the misunderstandings and, you know, things like that, but ultimately, family is family, and, you know, we all go through these things, and people disagree, and people fall apart. Lives get fucked up for a certain period of time. But in the end, everything will find a way to come back and heal itself. Um, I mean, if for those of you who know what happened in the story of that, it was the worst thing that could have happened in that situation. Minus the, me still being alive, you know, the wor absolute worst thing would have been um, I would have killed myself. But I didn't. So the second worst thing happened. Not, not not living, but, you know, everything else that's unfolding from that, you know. And I overcame that. It's taken a very long time. And it's still going to be even more time after that because of everything that's going on now from the repercussions of that. And I'm stronger and able to handle these things. But it's it's hard. It is it's difficult. But I just want you guys to know. Because I know a lot of people are going through so much shit with this, um, especially my friend Kyle with his family, that you can really overcome anything. And this isn't just, you know, with family not agreeing with your lifestyle, but depression, because I know, I know we feel it. And, you know, I, I've pulled out my hair since I was nine years old because of depression and anxiety. And it's, 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 a, you're, you're, you can move past it. It's going to take work. It's going to take forcing yourself to get out of bed. But one day, I can promise you, one day, there will be something to look forward to. And it won't be just a passing moment in time. It'll be a reason to get out of bed every single day. A reason to smile. And a reason to look in the mirror and say, damn, I'm proud of me. Look how far I've come. It will happen. And when it does... You will be so glad that you stuck with things and you made it through. And the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to look back and say, look at the lessons I've learned. You're not going to be full of misery and grief. You're not going to say, damn, my life is shitty. That sucked. You just, you're going to be thankful that you made it through. And you're going to be a better person for it. We, we go through these trials in life for a reason. I don't know what reason it is. It scares the shit out of me thinking that these things are preparing me for something greater. You know, how hard is that greater going to be kind of thing, you know? Um, but I'm ready. And I'm willing to give it everything that I have. Because I owe it to myself and to the people who I hurt. And the people that were there for me. You know, to do something with this lesson that I learned. And, um, yeah. So I just, you know, keep your head up. That's all I got to say. Because it will get better. It may take a long time. But it's worth it. Alright, I love you guys, thanks for watching, and, um, I missed you guys, and I'm glad to be back.